<laughs> yes, I remember exactly what I was doing and where it was. I was a senior in high school. It was right after lunch. I was embarrassed. I was in school. I was coming home from the studio. I was walking down the hall at UCLA Law School. I was on the shuttle getting off on 42nd in Lexington. I was on a bus going from Colby to New Haven for the Harvard-Yale game. I was uh, playing in the Harvard-Yale soccer game. I was in school. I was in class. I was on a tractor, as a matter of fact. I was in a second floor apartment that I was sharing with two other guys. I was in my school at Hill School in Pennsylvania. I was in the bottom of the dam in West Virginia. I was, I was in the bookstore reading, and suddenly it was this deathly hush. I got on the bus, and the driver said, our president has been shot. It seemed impossible. He was so dynamic, so charismatic, so utterly different from all the presidents that we had known. The dashing war hero with the internationally glamorous wife and adorable children. The big family home by the sea filled with tan and energetic siblings, all living the kind of wealthy, privileged life few could imagine. Magazine editors and photographers couldn't get enough of the Kennedy charm. He seemed to be indestructible. When Air Force One landed at Love Field in Dallas, Texas that day, his was still an incomplete presidency with a year to go. And Mrs. Kennedy, crowd yell. Despite the enthusiastic crowds, the president had political work to do here. With his own party splintering inside the state, Kennedy had to bring it together and raise the big money Texas could provide for the re-election campaign. And he was counting on Texas Governor John Connolly and his wife Nellie to help. Connolly, the most powerful politician in the state, agreed to ride with the president. That was a fateful decision 